The darkest ages of the Western Roman Empire had occurred during the imperial rule of Emperor Honorius, who oversaw a major decline in its influence. With the infamous sacking of Rome by Alaric, devastating civil wars, and the crossing of the Rhine by many Germanic tribes. However, there were those that dared to resist and fought despite the odds. In this documentary series, we will cover the life of the future Emperor Majorian and the many notable people and events that surrounded him in those tumultuous times. Majorian was born into a wealthy family of landowners with a military background around the year 420. He was named after his grandfather, who was the Magister Militum of Illyricum during the reign of Theodosius the Great. He was born in some of the harshest times for the Roman Empire in which many generals had competed for power. One rivalry that would play into Majorian's career was the competition between Flavius Aetius, Flavius Felix, and Bonifacius. Bonifacius was a renowned general in North Africa but had gone rogue. While unofficially ruling the province, he managed to control the grain shipments towards Rome, which allowed him to force emperors to make decisions that would benefit Bonifacius and his province. Fed up by Bonifacius' influence, a large army would be sent, led by three generals including Flavius Felix, to retake the province. However, during their siege of Carthage, Infighting between the three generals would force them to lift the siege and return back to Rome. While campaigning against other generals in Africa, Bonifacius invited the Vandal tribes in hopes of helping him fend off his rivals. However, King Gaiseric of the Vandals, after crossing into Mauritania, would go rogue, ignoring Darius's pleas for peace. The Vandals would then force Bonifacius out of his province and form the Vandal Kingdom in Africa. Bonifacius' rival, Flavius Aetius, was also a successful Roman general, known at the time for his campaigns in southern Gaul against foreign invaders. He had allegedly assassinated his rival, Flavius Felix, along with his wife. The two remaining generals, Bonifacius and Aetius, were the most influential men in the Western Roman Empire, who both fought over the favor of Emperor Valentinian's mother, Galla Placidia. However, upon the summoning of both generals, the Roman Augusta preferred Bonifacius as opposed to Aetius. Bonifacius was then given the title of Patrician and made Magister Militum of the West, while Aetius was stripped of his military position. Seeing this as a threat to his life, Aetius organized an army including Bucellari troops to kill Bonifacius, and met him near Rimini in 432, in a skirmish known as the Battle of the Two Strong Men. During the battle, though not confirmed, both Aetius and Bonifacius fought a duel on horseback. Aetius, having the larger lance, won the duel but had lost the battle, having to flee to the Hunnic Empire. Luckily for Aetius though, Bonifacius received a mortal wound and would die two months later. He proceeded to return to Rome unopposed with the Hunnic army accompanying him. This allowed him to become the most powerful man in all of Western Rome, acquiring the late Bonifacius' old title of Magister Militum. In addition to all of this, he had become the protector of Placidia and Valentinian III. The new Magister Militum would then serve the Empire well, by fending off many invasions of Burgundians, Visigoths, and Franks, along with containing the Bagaudae. As for Majorian, it is known that in his teens he had fought under the banner of Flavius Aetius' armies and had proved himself on the battlefield on multiple occasions. However, none of these battles had really shown his abilities, until his participation in the war against the Frankish tribes led by King Clodion in the Battle of Turinensis or Modern Day Taurus in 449. It is known that when facing the Franks, Majorian led numerous cavalry detachments by himself. When a part of the Frankish army tried crossing a bridge to attack the Roman army, 
Majorian personally led a charge into the Frankish army, stopping the Frankish advancement. Aetius, meanwhile, defended all the roads that led to the battlefield and fended off many other Frankish charges. Accordingly, Majorian would quickly rise through Aetius's ranks by making connections and being a reliable officer. Some of the companions he made would become important later on and would include Rissimer and Aegidius, who would later become the ruler of Soissons. While on campaigns with Aetius, in the year 450, Valentinian considered the possibility of marrying his daughter Placidia to Majorian. Valentinian, having no sons to succeed him, saw this as an opportunity to solve a future succession crisis and save face before his many powerful generals. The Emperor also understood the rogue nature of Aetius, who although was effective militarily, was not entirely loyal to the Emperor. However, Valentinian's plan to place Majorian on the Roman throne did not sit well with Aetius, who wished to have his own son, Merovaeus, marry Placidia instead. Aetius then had Majorian exiled to secure his plans of succession to the Roman throne. Around this time, the infamous king of the Huns, Attila, seeing a weakened Western Empire, ambitiously marched his army consisting of Huns and German allies on northern Gaul, sacking many cities such as Mainz, Cologne, Paris, and Orleans. Aetius, who was accustomed to the Hunnic threat, rallied an army of his own, allying with many Germanic tribes including the Visigoths led by Theodoric, the Alans, the Saxons, the Salian Franks, and the Burgundians. The two massive armies would then collide at the Catalanian Plains. Aetius, leading his large coalition of most likely 40,000 men, would make his way to the outskirts of the city of Aurelianum, arriving around the 14th of June, where he prepared to face the Hunnic army in a location now known as the Catalonian Plains. It is said that the night prior to the main engagement, a contingent of Roman allied Franks stumbled upon a band of Gepids loyal to Attila, and a deadly skirmish ensued. According to the historian Giordanes, up to 15,000 were killed in the skirmish between both sides. However, it is not likely that these numbers are accurate. Upon reaching the battlefield, Aetius deployed his Roman troops to the left flank, with his allied mounted Alan troops to the center and Visigothic allies led by Theodoric to the right. Aetius also kept his cavalry in reserve with the purpose of supporting the troops if there were to be a break in the line. On the other side of the battlefield, Attila deployed his mounted Hunnic troops in the center supported on their right by Gepid troops, in addition to the Ostrogoths on his right flank. The battle began with the Hunnic troops in the center, surging forward firing missile barrages into the Roman lines. Aetius ordered his troops into a shield wall, however, due to their mounted formation, the Alans were unable to form a shield wall and had to take the brunt of the Hunnic barrage, losing many men which in turn thinned their lines. Taking advantage of this, Attila ordered a frontal charge with his Hunnic cavalry, smashing into the Alans. This charge had a devastating effect on the Roman line, as the Hunnic troops were slaughtering the mounted Alans, subsequently creating a gap between the Roman center. In response, both Aetius and Theodoric sent their cavalry to try and stop the gap from isolating both sides of the Roman line. To make matters worse, the remaining Germanic troops had now advanced and made contact with the Roman and Visigothic troops. The fighting was brutal, and many Romans, Huns, and Germanics alike died. On the left flank, the Roman and allied troops were managing to hold firm against Attila's Gepids. However, the same could not be said on the right, where the Visigoths received heavy losses. In the struggle, the leader of the Visigoths, Theodoric, would be slain. The message of Theodoric's death soon arrived to his son Thorismund, who was previously eagerly awaiting his turn to join the battle on a hill overlooking the battlefield. 
He furiously charged into the Hunnic flanks with his mounted troops and proceeded to change the tide of the battle. Seeing this weakness, Attila would retreat, giving up on his Gallic campaign. This battle is seen by many historians as one of the most important battles in European history, as it effectively saved the Western Roman Empire from destruction. Following Attila's first defeat on the battlefield, Aetius was given the choice to forever end the Hunnic threat. However, he would mysteriously pull back, giving Attila a chance to flee. Some historians ascribe this action to him, realizing that without the Huns, the Germans would have no reason to stay peaceful to the Romans. Attila, however, the following year, would invade the Western Roman Empire once again through the Po Valley, sacking and ravaging many cities, notoriously raising Aquileia to the ground. However, a stroke of providence would fall on the seemingly doomed Western Empire after Pope Leo met with Attila. Although the reasons are not exactly clear, Attila turned back around to head back to his domain, releasing Rome from being destroyed. He would no longer serve as a threat to the Roman Empire, as he later passed away after a night of heavy drinking with his new bride. Aetius, following the Battle of the Catalonian Plains, would finally secure the marriage between his son and Galla Placidia. Though unfortunately for Aetius, due to the schemes of Valentinian III and Petronius Maximus, who was one of the emperor's advisors, Aetius would be executed in Ravenna. Some speculate that Valentinian saw Aetius as far too ambitious and dangerous to be trustworthy, which ultimately led to his decision. We hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you would like to see more from us. We also ask that you check our Discord and our Twitter page, and similarly, give us a follow for updates on upcoming content. We would like to thank our patrons, 2100AB, Sam Wise, G, and Gary Myers for continuing to support the channel. If you have a video that you would like us to cover, you can donate to our Patreon in the link in the description below and request a video topic. Once again, we thank you, and we hope to see you next time.